Hi there, friends, and welcome. It's Lavender Sky Panther with you on Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. And uh, I usually start off saying it's a fun little card reading today, and it still will be. But we're going to also throw in a little bit of a, an intention with it. I Before I set this up, I think you can tell we're moving in the direction of a, kind of a farm scene. <laughs> um, it just called to mind that I just really wanted to kind of connect in, say a little prayer, a little meditation ahead of setting this up. Uh, I let you know this apple candle. I've got some uh, Tibetan incense in the background too, uh, just to kind of really set the tone of gratitude and appreciation for all of those who are guardians of the land, all of those who do the farming with a good and pure heart, or those who are just simply trying to do their best. And just in loving, you know, kind of uh, thoughts and encouragement and in loving spirit of, you know, standing with the farmers, singing with them when they're chanting out there right now to protect their rights, to take care of their lands and, and do things in the way that they feel is best and, um, you know, standing up against some powers that are seeking to control and oppress that. And as we know, what they do affects all of us in being kind of the, the keepers and the, the guardians of the land and the producers of the food. And so anyway, uh, all that to say this reading may or may not be for you. You'll know if it is. Um, but I'm just putting a little ex extra intention in there that uh, we stand with the loving, you know, farmers of this earth and the ones who till the land and work the land and um, especially those with a good, good and pure heart and are doing it for all the right reasons and who love the land and love the animals and uh, do what they do for the nourishment of all of us. So um, that being said... This will kind of take on the, the farmer theme. Oh, and I just want to say, especially for all of those standing up in uh, Germany, the Netherlands, and, and really all over the world, wherever that applies, the um, and guardians of the land in general, those who have the intent for all the best for our earth, you know, our land, animals, sky, water, all of it. All right, so that uh, with that, this reading will have that kind of overall intention behind it. But I think you'll find, looking at the cards, it also applies to all of us in our all day, every day. All right, so let's see what comes up. There will be a little bit of a bilingual bit, and I think I'll start off with that before I even get into the cards. And then we'll go from there. So let's get to it. Oh, uh, just in case you need want to know, I am including some crystals over here. Before I even decided which decks to use, these just wanted to come out. I think we've got black tourmaline in the back. I might have... Um, accidentally referred to it as onyx at one point but no it's black tourmaline coming from california we have amethyst uh, a clear crystal and presley um bluestone from the presley mountains uh just to kind of be an earthy energy and then we're going to be looking at the uh answer is simple deck that i used last time too and then uh we're going to have some crystals at the bottom for grounding the overall energies of this reading so first we'll start off with the farm animals and the bilingual bit here. So it's uh, overall entitled here, In La Finca, which is on the farm. So I'm not going to cover the machinery. I'm just going to cover the, the living animals <laughs> represented here. So we have La Gallina y los Pollitos, is the hens and chicks. El Toro, the bull. Los Corderos, the lambs. El Pato, the duck. El cochinito, the piglet, and la oveja is the sheep. Then we have over here, el cerdo, the pig, el gallo, the rooster. Then we have la cabra, is the goat, el ganso, the goose, el patito is the duckling. And then we'll finish off with la vaca y el ternero is the cow and calf. And then I just found this in the cabinet um, going through um, relatives house trying to help them clean up and condense things and found this I think it originally probably held some spreadable cheese or something uh, but an artist uh, did a rendition of a cow wearing a bandana and that explains why I pulled a red bandana for the backdrop here the um, under underlying um, what do you want to call it little tablecloth for the setting so let's get into it we'll start off I'm going to read um, well you know what in this particular read we can read across or down and I think we might do a little bit of both yeah let's do both okay so we're gonna read across and then we'll read down as well or uh, inter intertwine them as 
as I as I move to do so. And in this case, I didn't mention it's not pick a card. It's just going to go all over the place. It's just for all of us. Okay, since we're all involved with whatever is happening with the farmers does kind of impact the world. I think we can agree on that. So the first card is we'll move in here. Number 57. And for those tracking numbers, that's a number 12. It could be a number three. Call your spirit home. And here we kind of have this. It's implying um, a house almost, you know, made out of in the clouds. And yet we have, you know, very tangible, real, you know, kind of 3D person in there waving out the window. And what this can represent is that um, in the 3D here, we can be sometimes a little detached from our 5D or higher self and get caught in the mundane and, and very earthly matters and forget that we've got higher help or even our higher self involved and that we really need to maybe lean more in that direction. You know, she's got her arm out, right out, outstretched, reaching out to connect more in with the, the spirit side or 5D side of things. And then to call that in and embody it and combine the strength of both worlds, you know, into the now. And so in this case, I think it's, you know, appropriate. It's a call to, even though we're working with the topic in this, this spread in this setting and this reading of the farm and that implies the earth. It's a very, you know, 3D touching kind of tactile thing. But then we're dealing with all of the animals that might be on the farm and all of us that are um, intertwined in that whole whole meaning of what a farm implies. So we've got human energy and spirit, but we also very much have the animals and their spirits and what that brings to everything. So I think this is a good card just to remember to um, feel into the earth, you know, maybe even physically ground into the earth with our feet as we maybe reach up, you know, to the heavens and meditation or just being outside and breathing in the air, connecting in with the earth, connecting in with the nature all around us. Uh, you know, as we're standing there, you probably have, you know, trees around, which also have life in them, such as insects and birds and um, squirrels and other things, um, beetles, whatnot, that, you know, we, anywhere we are, we, we're full of life and, and surrounded by life. So it's just a reminder, let's, let's contact or, or connect into all of life as we try to envision a more beautiful world and including beautiful, you know, natural means with uh, the, the caretaking and custodianship of the earth and the lands and the farmlands. So um, what I mean is let's connect in and envision a better, you know, future for it, meaning uh, let's get back to some non-chemical ways of treating the lands and the animals and get back to more natural means, more loving means. And that ties into the next two cards, Reclaim Your Art and the Context of Agriculture. Uh, let's get back to some of those really old ways of um, uh, turning the land over, you know, um, fertilizing with by natural, um, organic means, stop all of the fertilizers and other things. But I'm not saying all. Let me backtrack. Finding the balance of things that might be helpful, but taking a good look and, and sifting away those that are just pure toxins. And, you know, that leads to the next card of detox. You know, uh, obviously we know about all of these um, big corporation sprays, which are straight up poisons, and they don't help the, the agriculture, nor the humans, nor the animals around it. They just poison everything and, and get it all sick. And that is not what we're looking for. We're looking for reclaiming the old arts of... Um, are not old, but, you know, tried and true methods of being responsible, even though I don't really like that word, but I think you, you know what I mean, being a, a conscious, a, a spirit and soul conscious custodian of the earth. All right. So now I'll read up and down. Oh, before I do that. So this means many things. Now, if we tie it more personally into us, you know, going about everyday things, um, when we call the spirit home, uh, calling in home and we're trying to integrate the 3D and 5D, even at the in the home, like the physical home, you know, um, what little practices or, or things, you know, can be done. Obviously, you know, sweeping the porch clean, putting the intent, you know, for a clean home. Some people leave their shoes at the door. Um, I'm I'm kind of on, on the fence 50-50 with that. If that makes you feel good, 
uh, great. You know, there's a lot of um, energy, you know, tied to our shoes and where we walk around in the day. So a lot of people like to leave them at the door. Um, I rarely do that. Probably should do it more. Uh, I know there should, there's no should, would, coulds in this world, but, and, 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 and truth, but it's just go according to your feelings. So sometimes I feel better keeping them on after I've worked the earth or done yard work. Cause I feel like I'm integrating it, bringing it into the home and carrying that grounding energy in. Uh, but other people feel um, better leaving them at the door, maybe switching shoes um, or going around with no shoes. Again, totally up to you. Whatever integrates and makes you feel like you have got your, you know, your higher self and your, your earthly self integrated in a harmonious way in the home is a great thing to do. Now, there are other things that can be done, little spiritual practices. Um, if I've referred to this on other shows, um, where you, you know, where I've, I've learned this from other, you know, YouTubers, um, who do spiritual practices and, um, you know, such as you can leave lemons, um, in each room or out even at your front door. And once they start turning foul, uh, that means there might be some, some bad energies in the home. And then you might want to do a little clearing with incense or just your intention or with some, um, sage or whatnot. Um, I've just re learned recently by another YouTuber in a different part of the world, you can also use coconuts to do the same thing. You know, once they start turning, it might mean that there might be some bad energies to clear out in the house. So why am I bringing it up? Well, not only because the card is suggesting it and prompting it, but also, um, maybe there's the same thing to do with your land, uh, wherever you're at, or if you don't own any land yourself, go to a public area or park, uh, or a forest and, in, you know, where it's, you know, relatively safe, you know, you might just want to be on the fringe of it or whatever, obviously check your surroundings. When I mean safe, I mean from, um, you know, animal, maybe wild animal predators or human predators or other spirit predators, so to speak, um, if they're negative spirits, but anyway, um, just integrate and be grounded in and of yourself. Uh, remember to envision, envision that you are the light wherever you go. So you have that, you know, sphere or aura of protection about you, even if you do go into some questionable areas. Uh, but hopefully you can find some that are clear and good. Um, but anyway, it might be an invitation to go out into nature, go out onto whatever land you might have, and just simply uh, sit down, sit down on the grass, and even just for a moment, close your eyes, meditate, connect in, even if it's just a simple thank you. Or even it's just an inhale and exhale and just trying to feel the ground below you and feel all the nature all around you. And so it's just a reminder to maybe do that. All right. Now, another thing on a, a more, you know, human kind of people level here, reclaim your art. Um, in this case, we talked about for farmers, maybe it's going back to the old older techniques of hand tilling the land and and getting away from some of the machinery if possible. In this case, in the Western world, at least where I'm at in the United States, and particularly in Miami, where it's, you know, around uh, all year round, lots of foliage and vegetation that gets cut or leaves all over the place. Um, when yard people, uh, yard crews are hired, uh, they come around typically, and, and not just yard crews, it can be people who own them too. They have these leaf blowers. That's actually one of my pet peeves. They seem pretty useless to me. It's like, just get out a, a push broom and, and a rake for God's sakes and pick it up. But a lot of people for being, you know, uh, quicker about it for expediency, um, you know, take out a leaf blower. So it runs on gasoline, of course. I guess there's some electrical, like, like electric run versions, but the gas is involved at some point somewhere along the line to produce everything. But anyway, um, people go around with uh, leaf blowers, blowing them all over the place. So again, to me, this is a call to literally reach for that broom, that wood handled broom, not the metal handled one or whatever. There's a real power in connecting in with the natural materials. Yes, you can argue metal is natural, but I'm not talking about one that's been through a processing plant to be a rolled metal to create tubes and, and handles for, you know, metal handled brooms and such or rakes you know, get an actual wood handled um, broom or shovel or whatever you're using to work the land. There's a big difference when you're holding it and connecting in with the earth. And by that same token, try to find a, um, a metal opposed to a plastic head on, on a rake or with a broom, try to go with more natural materials and um, instead of plastic and nylon. And again, it's all about taking that in your hand with intention and connecting in with the earth when you're working it and trying to stick with more natural materials. Same thing with like a shovel head. Um, 
try to go for, you know, there's lots of different metals. Maybe you can even find something that's more copper based or something just really connects you into the earth in a very earthy way. Uh, so again, that's where I'm tying that in back to reclaim your art, um, reclaim our more natural roots when even just doing what seem to be mundane tasks, putting more um, intention and consciousness into it on a more spiritual level. And you might find some uh, happier kind of feeling and, and vibes in with the earth itself. The earth itself will thank you, uh, opposed to all of these other chemical driven things. Because what happens when you have a chemical driven, you know, lawnmower or leaf blower or edger, eventually all of that, those gas, it went for one, um, pollutes, you know, the air, but also on a micro level. And also, um, the, you know, the gas itself ends up somewhere, the oils and gases used to run these things. And they even will be on the surface of, you know, whatever pavement is around you. And then when it rains, that becomes runoff and ends up somewhere. And we can't forget, we've got all these beautiful squirrels or birds or things that will then come to the land where we've just been looking for things to forage. And, you know, we don't, the intention shouldn't be to contaminate them. Because when we look at the full circle of life and cycle of life, we know that anything that impacts the one impacts all of us when it comes to things like this. And all of this includes the, the, the human kingdom and the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, all the kingdoms, right? All right. So anyway, I think that's enough on that one. Now we move to detox, which it probably just talks about that card on the, on the Reclaim Your Art one as well, um, where we want to keep things pure. Um, another thing to do in, in, in on the heels of, you know, this card over here that we just talked about would be um, maybe detox the land further instead of just the intention of sitting down there and meditating and try to connect in. Maybe even actually I've heard of a practice where some people take a pure crystal, a purifier, an amplifier like this crystal. Um, I'm sorry, I got to change hands on the camera here. You know, like this crystal, um, and this is just a more of a clear quartz to amplify you know the energies um but take whatever crystal might um mean something to you i prefer the 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 raw ones the raw crystals the rough crystals opposed to the tumbled or polished ones for things like this in this case here we've got an amethyst but take whatever crystal you feel works for you and um actually uh, dig up a little of the earth and bury it in there and then maybe maybe do your meditation with a hand over the area or, you know, just in your mind's eye after you've buried it and just, you know, ask to purify the land, the water and everything around you and ask for, you know, Mother Earth, Gaia, however you want to phrase it, or just the, the loving earth to lovingly receive it and then imbue your own energies into it and your intentions to raise the frequency and to protect the lands that you are on and all around you. And then you can take that further and imagine the entire earth being loved and purified and brought back to balance in cooperation with the earth itself and uh, do whatever you want see where that takes you okay I guess uh, looking at the candle here I haven't done it but I guess you could also do it with a candle uh, holding a candle as you make your intention or any other means that feels right to you okay but just keeping the highest and most pure and loving vibrations uh, going into the earth and feel them out also coming back up into you. And if you want, even like if you're sitting or standing, then, you know, spread your hands up in the air, kind of in a victory position, arms outstretched. So that energy then can work between you, you serving as a loving bridge, uh, connecting down into the earth, but also shooting it back up out into the sky and cosmos beyond. And then that coming back through you again and going back down into the earth and keep a beautiful cycle flowing. Okay. One more thing, another beautiful thing to do is if you remember it, if you're not doing it already, is if you've gone out about your day and you come back to wherever you are living, um, be sure to uh, greet the land, you know, as you come back approaching to your home or wherever you are and just say, you know, say it in your mind or say it out loud. Hey, everyone, I so do appreciate you. Thank you for loving and protecting the land and nourishing it. Um, my goodness, like all, all of you plants, you look beautiful, trees, animals, insects all of you thank you for being here that type of thing and remember to do that maybe every time you you come back or or head out for the day or evening okay um now coming to the grounding cards below the top three we just had we're going to have um, red jasper take action and this is some some raw um, red jasper 
and crystals. Tiger's Eye, Overcome Your Fears. And Tiger's Eye is, this is Rainbow Tiger's Eye. I didn't have any other piece to show right now. And then we have Shungite, which I do have a bracelet somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So Detox Your Life. And that did just happen to come out underneath the other Detox card. Oh, and actually I forgot to mention, I'm going to come back up here for a second. We had the the uh, the 12 or the 3, uh, 57 on the first card if you're following numbers. We have number 7 for Reclaim Your Art. And then uh, Detox, sorry, I'm trying to read it from here. Um, we have 13, well, number 49 or a 13 or a 4, okay? All right, so now we'll look at these earth grounding crystals that I pulled underneath each card. So let's go back and we'll kind of read them vertically now. So we had Call Your Spirit Home, and I covered that extensively. And it's funny, though, because she's wearing red and the uh, crystal popping up is the red jasper take action. And so I think we've already covered it. Uh, so this is just a little affirmation, you know, to take action, you know, to call in and kind of integrate the 5D spirit over soul or higher self or God energy, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, whatever you consider higher guardian angels, um, guardian angelics, uh, whatever it is that feels good to you that is of love, uh, call it in and integrate it. And we, we just talked about other, you know, ways to do that and how to ground and connect that all in. All right. So, but it does take an action. It takes a conscious calling it in sometimes. Uh, we don't want to just take it for granted. Sometimes we have to specifically call it in, right? And just getting also a reminder about, I did post this on a um, community page um, on my YouTube channel. That was a little practice I was doing in the Christmas holiday season. And I'm actually doing it right now too is just maybe um, to call in that spirit and, and seeing the red, you know, kind of theme and with the red jasper, and particularly with how it looks in, in the raw state, is reminding me of cinnamon sticks and some nice action to take to kind of um, integrate things is uh, maybe just get a pot of water, uh, bless it, you know, thank it, throw in some orange, either orange peel or, or you can do it without the orange and um, just put some cinnamon and clove, maybe a little bit of a sprinkle of sugar in there and boil it to spread that beautiful scent and aroma through the house. It's just reminding of me of that because we are like up in the sky, you know, we're not on the ground and let those, um, you know, the vapor and the, you know, go through the house too. That might be also another nice way to connect in and um, integrate the spirit, you know, air element world and with the earth element world and the, the 3D. And that can be any other, uh, any other uh, fragrances you want to put in there, too. You can go, if you have in the yard, like I've planted lemongrass around my property, you can go get some lemongrass, throw it in there, or lavender or rose petals, whatever you want to do for that, right? Okay. Now, when we were talking about Reclaim Your Art, and it really took my attention that she's on a wooden chair and she's reaching for a wooden instrument, and the cabinet is presumably wood as well. And the broom has a wood handle, and it's a wood floor. Lots, speaking of wood, wood and earthy energies, and with the green and brown colors, right? And then we get to Tiger's Eye, a brown color, and the Tiger's Eye, Overcome Your Fears. And look at, she's um, she's even kind of up on a, on a stool, even though it seems pretty sturdy. Uh, some people are afraid of heights, and it might have been brave for her to get up on that chair, especially if you're somebody who has problems with your legs or knees or balance. It could take a lot to, to get up on a chair. And yet, you know, this person's doing it. Maybe she, even if she has no fears about that, it is kind of taking us out of our element of being grounded on the ground and going up in the air and trusting someone else's legs, in this case, the legs of the chair. Um, we got to trust ours as well, right? Integrated with that. So what am I saying? It's kind of echoing. She's wearing the blue and the red. It's kind of echoing the blue and the red of this card and, and being up in the air and then also needing to be grounded down, right? So in this, in this case, overcome your fears. Going back to the bigger farmer's example and tying it in examples of our own, those farmers are, you know, overcoming fears and standing up on a global scale, standing up against some evil forces. That takes a lot. That takes a lot of... Um, I don't you want to use the word bravery for everyone. For some, they've got to summon up courage and bravery. For others, it's just like there's no question about it. They're just standing up, connected in with their spirit, standing up for what's right. And it's like uh, like I like to say, I have a that's not right button. If something's happening in the world and it hits my that's not right button, 
I'm just acting in full force, you know, taking action like this, this Jasper, red Jasper says take action. It's not even a thought. It's just, um, you know, it's just like, no, I'm just doing it. It's a, it's a, you know, direct connection in with spirit and with the, um, over soul with God, the divine, all of it, um, prompting just to do that action. So for some, maybe, you know, getting up on a ladder or a chair to get things done does take a small or, or big act of bravery or courage. Um, but just make sure that you are fully, um, don't be afraid, like, you know, this card says, you know, uh, overcome your, come your fears. Maybe don't be afraid to do something like that, but make sure if you're solid and strong and can just do it on your own without anybody, quote unquote, spotting you, like in a gym, if you're going to take on something like free weights or do something that's going to be a little bit, might put you in a little bit dangerous co condition. If you're uh, momentarily weakened, you know, you don't want to drop something on you. Same thing here. Make sure if you're not feeling fully confident and, um, fully aligned in your 3d and 5d bodies um, maybe make sure somebody's around even if you do something that seems so simple as getting up on a chair to get something um, and if you don't say if you say well, well look I don't have a, a partner or I don't have a child or friends or family around nobody um, then you know just wait a moment and you know try to find a neighbor or you know I don't know maybe even like the the postal delivery guy or or somebody can just step there a moment with you and, and just spot you while you do it and you know then they go about their way and uh, maybe be creative about it but maybe you know don't take any, anything on like this even if you know you're not quite 100 percent sure about it okay i don't know why that's coming through but just you know we all some of us you know uh if you, especially if you've had to be on your own you're like well i can't just wait around for somebody to get stuff done um just make sure you're in a position of strength to do it and not taking any unnecessary risks or chances okay and listen to your intuition on it if it's okay or not um but don't be afraid absolutely not uh overcome your fears by uh, going within and making sure you're in full alignment. That's all. Okay. Now, um, oh, and that goes too with the property and wherever you're living. Um, you know, do whatever you might need to do to assist you in a 3D way to overcome your fears. I'm going to give one example only on this. Um, you know, again, in the Western, you know, world over here in the U.S., a lot of people have alarms um, for their homes. And, you know, they have a automatic, if, if something gets tripped, if a contact on the window gets disheveled, you know, it calls the police right away and, or calls the alarm company. And then they ask for a passcode. And then if you don't give it, they'll call the police right away, etc. Well, not everyone can have, you know, these kinds of alarms and there's sophisticated ones. They're very, there's some very basic ones, but the point is that, uh, kind of going back to this reclaim your art and wood theme, you might want to consider just getting little um, sticks, very sturdy sticks. Uh, they can be, you know, milled ones, you know, um, kind of at your, your local construction company store or home-based uh, home goods kind of store. You can get them and cut them down to fit within the window. If you have a sash window, the one that slides up and down or one that goes side to side. And you can get the stick and put it in the track or put it in the space above where you lift the window and wedge it in there so somebody would have to literally break windows to uh, open them, you know, with or without an alarm. Same thing to, to put a broom handle, you know, that's coming to my attention, put a broom handle down in a sliding door track if you have glass sliding doors. Just basic things to help give you that little added sense of security that's very low to no tech way of doing it. And um, especially if you can't... Um, at the moment, um, pay for, you know, any kind of, um, hired alarm service like the one I just mentioned, that's a very basic way to also give a little added peace of mind, especially if you're on your own or, you know, you might even be with people and they just sleep through everything and wouldn't even hear it if somebody broke glass, right? <laughs> anyway, that's just what's coming to me to help overcome your fears, give you a little more peace of mind. Okay. Now we go back to this other detox card. And looking down, um, you know what? Yeah, it says Shungai Detox Your Life. And I'm just getting on this one. What's coming to me is we see this cocktail glass. I guess it's a martini glass. I don't drink alcohol, uh, so I'm not really too familiar with it. But um, I believe it's martini. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but the grass is seemingly kind of just thriving there in the air, right? doesn't even look like there's water or anything. And that's reminding me of the whole world and kingdom of the air plants. This might be a call for you to take a look into what those um, are all about. In Miami here, we got a ton of air plants. They grow on live oaks or oak trees. 
Uh, they grow pretty much anywhere on, on a bunch of different types of trees. And sometimes when there's a rough weather, you know, windy weather, they knock down a stick or a branch cluster and you'll see a little air plant growing there. And um, it, it pretty much, it does, you know, kind of defy, um, you know, much of what the other plant kingdom is about, you know, for, I mean, for goodness sakes, it grows in the air, it just needs the air, a little bit of mist, maybe a little bit of moisture. Um, it does, you know, tend to need something to grow on, but it's not like it depends on soil. It can pretty much grow on anything if it wanted to, if it has enough anchorage, you know, to, to anchor it down. So anyway, that might be a call to look into the world of air plants. Um, and then the, the shun guide below says detox your life. And I think that's, you know, pretty obvious. I think, you know, we've already covered other ways that we would like to detox, um, comes to mind, especially if you have your own grass, you know, if you have a, a lawn, you know, um, I'm not telling anyone what to do, obviously, uh, that's not my intent, but I would just pose the question, do you really need that lawn to look perfect and every blade of grass green? Um, or can you, uh, if you have some type of poison lawn service that comes and put poisons on your yard, uh, to keep weeds out and keep it green, you know, can't you maybe examine, do you really want to have that? One, um, you know, you're poisoning your own lawn and that goes into your own water system. And so you're kind of poisoning yourself on one level, your water supply. Also, it seeps into the ground and that affects you, especially if children are running around on it. And I'm talking about even long after you quote unquote have a little sign after they spray typically that says, oh, don't walk on it for 24 hours. But you're also impacting neighbors uh, who might walk animals along the you know, the city or, you know, property, city's property side of whatever grass you're on, so to speak, or also just squirrels and, and birds that come by and land. Um, it really does negatively impact everything into the, you know, to the point that whether it's trace poisons or more severe ones, higher percentages, it is negatively impacting things. And all for what? Just to make the, you know, the grass look green? You know, just just really consider, reconsider if you're if you're doing the sprays on the lawns. Um, anyway, it's just it's a little message there, and, and maybe you haven't even thought twice about it. And I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, but I am just saying if everyone would stop the poisons, um, you know, wow, we'd all be much uh, healthier and treat ourselves and all around us much better. And if you own one of these poisons companies and that, that spray for mosquitoes and whatnot and are like, hey, that's not right, really consider what you're doing. There are other ways to uh, treat the lawns without going in the hardcore chemical poisons route. Um, I've seen where there's some quote unquote fertilizers that are made up primarily of oregano, for example, or other natural herbs um, that can do the job. You know, maybe it's not as quote unquote foolproof. But it'll do the job adequately enough and not poison everyone. Now, someone might say, well, that's more expensive. That's too expensive. Well, hey, I'm calling upon you. And this is also for just individual people who own or sit on a property of land that they maintain. Uh, think of more creative ways. Really look up different natural products, plants that can help counteract some of these things. Um, and, um, you know, maybe you'll be the first to come out with something that is affordable for most and also does things in a natural conscious way, right? Respectful way for all. All right, now, um, Shun Guide also with the uh, Detox Your Life also, you know, um, can can apply to the electronic world. So I know some people either wear a Shun Guide bracelet or necklace while you're working on the computer, or you can put a piece simply on your laptop or next to it to, you know, try to neutralize and, and detox the harmful rays and, and whatever radiation type things are coming off of our devices or near our phones. Uh, so that's just another option, one of many that can be done for that. There are many crystals that can do the job or uh, collections or combinations of crystals to do that. So this just might be an invitation to look into that whole world as well. And this whole reading is about let's let's more consciously think of things. You know, we do stuff day by day without even questioning it. Like like I said earlier example, grabbing a leaf blower instead of just grabbing a broom. You know, and I do realize there are plenty of places in the world that wouldn't even think about picking up a leaf blower. So again, since I am based in the United States and in Miami in particular, I'm just kind of, you know, yes, kind of Miami centric, US based centric here, US centric based. Um, in some of the things that I talk about. 
Um, I have lived in Europe. I've, I've lived in a, in a couple of different countries. I highly re- recommend any, anybody, everyone in the U.S., if you have the opportunity to go live abroad, do it. You'll get a, a very healthy perspective on what's going on in the world and not just, um, you know, receiving very biased information coming in from the U.S. alone. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'd say that's it for now. And again, you know, I just, you know, no matter what your views, um, you know, on what's going on with the situation, which uh, with some of the, what they're calling protests with the farmers know, I call them just standing up and singing and vocalize and speaking up uh, for their rights and for the rights of the animals in the land and, uh, and far beyond. So um, anyway, that's it for now. I wish everyone a beautiful right now. And till next time, Lavender Sky Panther. Bye. Oh, great peace and love to you as well. Bye.